potatoes, red ripe tomatoes. I ain't never satisfied. I want the frim fram sauce that also fed. Chef Fafa on the side. Robert Most Young Cooking Show is on the air from Isiola Lodge in Linville, North Carolina. Welcome to the show. We have today Chef John Goodson from Casa Rustica in Boone. I'm so excited to have you on the show. You're going to make some bruschetta. I am. I'm going to make a uh, caramelized onion and red pepper salsa bruschetta. Awesome. Let's start that, Robert. I'm going to have you torch our red pepper here. Okay. I love these uh, tongs. They have several positions. You flip this, you flip this like this, and you can open it, open them wide. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to tor start torching this. You are. What we're doing here is actually roasting the red pepper. We're going to blacken the skin. Robert's going to be rotating it every few moments. What you're looking for is black skin on there, but you don't want anything burned. While he's doing that, I'm going to cut up some bread for the bruschetta itself. Yes. Bruschetta is Italian for grilled bread. I'm actually going to toast this in the oven, not grill it. Uh, All right. Just take any French bread, something you want a firm texture, nothing soft. You're going to cut it into pieces as big as you want to eat. Put olive oil, salt, and pepper on top of that. And you're going to toss it in the oven. How are you doing there, Robert? Yeah, coming along pretty good. Excellent. That's what we're looking for. You yes. want to blacken the whole thing around the sides. Okay. Then, while Robert's blackening that, I'm going to start the salsa. All right. I'm going to take one red onion, take off the end of it, split it in half. If you leave the root on there, then it won't fall apart while you're cutting it. Hey, that's good French technique. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then we're going to cut it radially, where I'm turning the knife a little bit each time I make a cut. Yeah. So that you end up with pieces of onion the same size each time. You end up with a dice that's called a brunoise. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a nice even dice. It's going to be a nice size for our salsa. Great technique. We're going to put all this in our mixing bowl. In addition to the red onion, we're going to use some fresh garlic. Oh, good. Anytime you're cutting up garlic, make sure you take the root end off because nobody likes to crunch on that. No, definitely. Where's your restaurant located? Uh, Casa Rustica is rest ah. located on 105 in Boone. Yes. We're uh, almost across from the Hot Inn. And Your we, cuisine is uh, modern American Italian? It's American Italian. Yes. We serve everything you've heard of in an Italian restaurant, as well as nightly specials of steaks and fish. And we're open seven nights a week at 5 o'clock. I'm going to slice up, or dice up a green tomato. I'm going to add that to our salsa. Oh, good. Lots of green tomatoes out there on the vines in the country. I've got tomato plants in my yard. Pulling in a lot of red tomatoes, but there's plenty of greens, so you can make fried green tomatoes or Absolutely. you can do this dish that you're doing today. Make sure you take the core out of the tomato when you cut it. Again, crunchy. Nobody likes that. Oh, yeah. All right, to the salsa. And don't worry about what order you're adding this. We're waiting for the pepper. You're going to add a little bit of cayenne. Some pine nuts. Oh, yeah. Pignolia. Mm, Pignolia. Love nice. those pine nuts. Salt and pepper. Olive oil. Not much. Just enough to loosen it up. Yes. And then whatever vinegar you have handy. I'm using red wine today. Mm. Apple cider works just as well. Nice. We're going to stir that up. Now, if you had a a burner at home where you didn't have to use the tong. You could rest them in the oven. Yes. You might not get as black with them. Mm, okay. What do you uh, think, uh, sir? I think we're good there. Okay. So take that, wrap it up in plastic wrap. Okay. What we're doing now is sweating the pepper. All the right. plastic wrap's gonna make the skin pull away from the pepper flesh and make it really easy to peel off. So All while right. he's doing that, we're going to caramelize our onions. Alrighty. Still using the same red onion. This time we're not dicing, we're mm -hmm. julienning. So you're cutting radially again. Oh yeah. But into long lengths, not into dice. I'm gonna heat up our saute pan. Okay. Again, olive oil. All right. Or any oil. You can use canola oil, soybean oil if you want to taste a little Asian. Mm-hmm. Anything will work. All right. 
But you do want your pan to get hot. Yes, and caramelizing is bringing out the sugars in this food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to brown the sugars. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a nice dark product. The onions are going to get floppy and loose. We're yes. going to take out some of the bite. They're going to be a lot sweeter. Oh, yeah. What are we doing? All right, there? this oil's getting good and hot. Excellent. Add these to the pan. All right. If you can hear that sizzle, that's what you're looking for. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to put them in before mm -hmm. the oil's hot enough. No, you can't no. caramelize in a cold pan. All right. You got a website? We do. We have a brand new website. It's www.casarustica1981.com. Ah, uh, I'm really guessing 1981 was the year that the parents of Rick. Mm hmm. Peter and uh, Sarah started Casa Rustica in 1981. Mm hmm. Fall of 81, so we're in our 25th year. It's our anniversary this year. How exciting. It is exciting. Yes. It's a lovely place to go for a romantic atmosphere. Absolutely. Yes. We do private parties as well. I took my wife recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a wonderful time. Excellent. Yes. So it was just as good 25 years later? Oh, yeah, buddy. Excellent. Yes. All right. Well, those are going. Okay. Let's see what we can do with You're this gonna pepper. You're going to take care of this pepper. I'm going to try to. All right. Oh yeah, I think we're good. Oh good. What I'm going to do here is take the back side of a knife. Oh yeah, good technique. And peel the pepper. Mm -hmm. Which is still That's very hot. Baby. <laughs> Would you recommend putting it in an ice bath? You could put it in an ice bath, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you can be patient and wait till it gets cool. Put right. it in your fridge. You pretty much can't hurt it at this point. Oh yeah. And it's already hurt as you can see. So, and if somebody didn't want to do all this work and just wanted to put the red pepper in there, what's the benefit of doing this particular technique? The benefit is you can tell your friends you roasted red pepper. <laughs> yeah, right. It <laughs> takes out the bitterness, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, the bitterness of that skin. Mm -hmm. And you can buy roasted red peppers cans. Oh, you don't have oh, to do this. Uh -huh. But it is a lot of fun. It is. Because let's How have often, fun in the kitchen. How often do you get to burn what things? I'm talking about. <laughs> I hear that. All right, so I'm going to cut it open. Yeah, you're going to remove Just, those membranes. Mm -hmm, you see the white part, it's called the rib. We're going to take that out. Yes. We'll try not to burn ourselves. Yeah, that is one hot pepper. It's working hard today for us, folks. This is going to be a great dish. Bruschetta. Bruschetta. Uh huh. Again, that's Italian for grilled bread. Yes. So now I'm cutting the pepper into a julienne and then turning it sideways to make it a dice. Yes. And you don't have to worry about everything being exact because it's a salsa. And the more interesting textures you have, the more interesting your salsa is. Oh, yes. All right. We've got that diced up. We're going to add it to our bowl from earlier. All right. We're going to stir all that up. Oh, yeah. Turn that so our folks at home can see. What yeah. wonderful colors. Mm hmm. Mm, looking provincial. <laughs> All right, that sauce is done for the moment. All right, these are caramelized, sir. Excellent. What we're going to do now is take the bread that we toasted. We're going to put, take some cream cheese, regular, everyday cream oh, cheese. Oh, cream cheese. We're going to put that oh, on top because oh. that keeps it from getting soggy when we throw all this wet stuff on there. Oh, yeah. The butter's going to melt, make everything soggy. Oh. All right, so what we have here. Is bruschetta. Yes. We're going to add your onions to it. This is a light caramelization. You'll see that they're floppy now. Yes. We got a little bit of color to them. I like the color. color that hasn't gone too dark at this mm -hmm. point. You know, to mix with this beautiful salsa you've got. All right. At this point, let's go ahead and put them on the plate. Because the salsa is going to fall off if we carry it around. Yes. No, these are ready to go now. Ready to go, because mm -hmm. you've already pre-toasted these. They're toasted. Mm-hmm. They're ready. Interesting. Now we're going to add our fresh salsa. And this salsa, you'll remember, has vinegar in it. Vinegar cuts out the flavor of salt. Yeah, the red wine vinegar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add more salt here at the end. Oh. Then we're going to add a little bit of fresh Romano to each one. Romano? Mm-hmm. Mm. We grate this at the restaurant daily. Oh, nice. Now, Romano uh, being a sheep cheese. It is a sheep cheese. Mm -hmm. Pecorino Romano. Mm -hmm. Very popular. Mm -hmm. It's used in a lot of Italian cooking. All Caramelized right. onion bruschetta with red pepper salsa. What an appetizer. 
Woo, wake up your senses, mm -hmm. get you ready for the next course. Absolutely. We'll be right back. The Country Gourmet of Fosco is the place to find wonderful gifts and finest cookware. Dishes, silverware, candles, clocks, and many surprises. Even those hard-to-find items that you can't get anywhere else. Gifts for him, gifts for her, gifts for anyone who enjoys special things. For more than 30 years, the Country Gourmet has been a must-see stop in the high country, so don't miss it. Visit the Country Gourmet weekdays 10 to 5 and Sundays noon to 5. The Country Gourmet of Fosco, where kitchens meet creativity gadabouts, full service catering, you do it all, don't you? We can do anything. If we're wanting to go simple, we can start with our fabulous hickory smoked barbecue that we cook ourselves eight to ten hours, or we can go to something elegant as uh, grilled lobster tails, Ooh. filet mignon, Ooh. we uh, have our own linens, china, uh, we can provide tables that everything you need. We try to find out what you know someone's looking for and we tailor a menu to that. So it's a, it's a custom arranged experience. Yes sir. Uh, have food, we'll travel. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pat Parks. And I'm Dave Parks. Welcome to Distinctive Cabinetry and Design. We're located at Shops at Twin Rivers in Fosco. Whether it is a kitchen, bath, home office, library, or entertainment area, we at Distinctive Cabinetry and Design understand that we are creating more than just rooms. We will work with you to develop a design that fits your specific needs and tastes. So stop by and visit us and our staff at the most beautiful and complete cabinetry showroom in the high country. Come to the historic Skyline Village Inn, a comfortable lodge with rustic accommodations, spectacular views, and a unique history. Use our beautiful new conference room for meetings, banquets, special events, and parties. The Skyline Wine and Beer Shop has the area's best selection of beer and wine. The Skyline Cavern Tavern is a complete restaurant featuring great food, thick juicy steaks, seafood, vegetarian fare, and mixed drinks. We're located close to home at milepost 331 on the Blue Ridge Parkway in the junctions of 226 and 226A. Welcome back to Robert's Museum Cooking Show. Chef John Goodson from Casa Rustica. We've had the bruschetta. What are you going to do next, mm -hmm. sir? Next, we're going to stuff some fresh crepes that we're going to make right here. Woo! And we're going to start that by melting some butter in All Robert's right. pan. And while that butter melts, I'm going to crack an egg into any handy mixing bowl. All right. You want a little bit of flour, about a quarter cup. Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One egg. Quarter cup flour. Uh -huh. I'm going to pour in some milk. Looking at half a cup of milk. While you're beating this, you want to get all the lumps out of it. We're oh, yeah. essentially making a very thin pancake here. But you don't want the lumps that you're often counseled to have in pancakes. All right, give me some of that butter. Robert. All right, how much would you like, sir? Let's just start pouring and we'll find out. We're probably looking at half a stick of butter for this recipe. Okay. Yeah, stop there. All right. All right, once you've got your butter incorporated, then it's time to heat up a pan to make your crepes. Okay. I'm going to continue beating the lumps out of yes, this. Yes, put a little if butter in there. Uh, if you want to use pan spray or butter, whatever you have. Okay, I'll butter. go with the melted butter. All right. All right. Butter does have a tendency to stick and burn. If, but if you're careful, it does taste better. Would that be enough for your crepes, sir? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. There's butter in the crepes mix, so you don't have to worry too much about stickage. Okay. Otherwise, you would use a, a pan release. Mm-hmm. Yep. As thin as a crepe is, if it sticks, you've ruined it. Yes. Now, what are you stuffing it with? I'm going to stuff it with spinach, chicken, and a variety of cheeses. How exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. well, you're going to like this, I think. Oh, yeah. All right. This is starting to heat up. Just you want to pour stuff. just enough crepes mix in there yeah. that it starts to stick. So what we're looking for is curling edges and brown color. While Robert's keeping an eye on our crepes, okay. I'm going to cut up some chicken. I threw this chicken in the oven, 350 for a few minutes. Oh, well, if you don't mind to move that out of the way, sir, okay. so everybody can see your lovely chicken. All right. I'm going to chop this chicken pretty finely because we're going into a crepe again. And once again, you took that breast and you uh, uh, put salt, olive pepper, oil on it, salt olive. and pepper, mm -hmm. and then popped it in the oven. Yeah, 350 for how long? Uh, probably seven or eight minutes. These yep. are pounded chicken breasts, though. Okay. They're not as fat as what you buy. Oh, yeah, buy. so it doesn't take as long. No, no. Right. You can use just take a breast out of the package and put it in there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, to this, I'm going to add some ricotta cheese. 
I'm gonna lay half a cup of ricotta cheese and crack another egg in there. Wow. Mm-hmm. This rich. is gonna be rich. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got some fresh whole milk mozzarella here, shredded. That's a high-end mozzarella. It is. It's called grande. It's what we use at the restaurant, and it's excellent. Grande. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Just added Romano, salt and pepper, Parmesan cheese. Like I said, there's a lot of cheese going into this. Yes. I'm going to dice a little bit of a red onion. We're still using the same red onion from earlier. This is a good way to get full usage out of an onion before it goes bad. Yes. All right. Again, just rough chop it. After that, we're going to use some more pine nuts. And I'm going to mince some more garlic. Just being Italian, garlic goes in everything. Oh, yeah. Garlic. Go ahead and flip that over. Okay. Make sure again that you take the root ends off your uh, garlic. Not bad, Robert. Thank you, sir. And uh, you'll notice I'm holding the knife in the blade on the blade. I'm yeah. pinching it, mm -hmm. not holding it back on the handle. Good point. It gives you a lot more control when you're mincing things and trying not to cut your fingertips off. 